uh, if, 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 if you can't stand, stand blue, blow, don't throw, don't throw blow. blow. Well, I, I would think here, you know, just looking at the political dynamics of our country, the different machinations and, and what have you, you would think that that is extremely reflective of some of the realities that we've had, that, that we've, that we've we, we, you know, we've experienced so far. Um, you know, since the assumption of office by President George Manning, we are, uh, which was some momentous uh, occurrence on the um, 22nd day of January in 2018. A lot of people were extremely happy and, you know, celebrating the fact that we've had our first transfer of power from one democratic government to the next. But obviously, uh, and, and, and for some, um, you know, um, of obvious reasons, that there were a few people who were extremely sad. And, and we begin to see manifestation of, of that. You know, uh, people starting to throw accusations of um, um, malfeasance and misgovernance and all of the different stuff. So, you know, listening to the song, you would think that it is extremely, you know, it, it epitomizes uh, the current happening happenings in our country where you have a few people who just a couple of months ago were in the mountain of authority and all of these accusations about um, the nepotism showing that at the doorstep now of the president. So if you live in a land deserves a bad soul when when with the CDC every bad it, soul every bad soul deserves a bad medicine yeah let's see when when the, when the Congress for Democratic uh, 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 change was 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 out of the government opposition they had uh, the government um, uh, uh, on the ropes so now it's the opposition time to have the government on the ropes well here is what I think you see Baga likes to be diplomatic and he <laughs> said oh, no it's kind of cool reticent and but you play that song, and today I'm going to play that song over and over, just to re-energize myself. Because you live in a glass house, and you stand right in front of your house, and you throw stone. And then we throw about three back at you, and you cry. You come up, you throw one blow. I throw one, two, three. Then I throw one, two, and take two steps back. That's five. And then you start crying. I'm saying it because I don't miss my word. My brother and friend, Barry, you ask Philip right now, you say... If I'm going myself, we're cool. But you throw the blow, the throw, you jump, you tear your bear, you run away. Then you come up on the you say, oh, this is that. Somebody won't kill me. T-Max Jalatet. You come up recently, you say, you guys are being targeted. You are living in a glass house, which means we're all in this beautiful glass house. But you live in the beautiful one. You have the opportunity to have a microphone every morning. We don't. We do it maybe on Thursdays. We do it with press briefings and updates from the president. And occasionally on and then Fridays. Occasionally. <laughs> but every morning, you have the airwaves. And then you throw one or two jobs. The day we throw one or two back to you, you come up, hey, I don't feel safe. Do you think we feel safe when you hold so public, public officials should have uh, thicker skin, they say. Oh, yeah. We should have thicker yeah. skin. But then you, you understand that if you have a thin skin... Then of course you'll be in the position that you're always in. Yeah, and, 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 and the thing about it, having a thicker skin doesn't necessarily mean that you're shooting, you know, uh, uh, so you accusations mean, you at your accusers. So you mean you should be you be tolerant of, of the views expressed? Obviously, and, and being tolerant don't necessarily mean that you cannot engage you cannot engage in uh, counter accusations if you have been accused. For instance, if a journalist who ha who is morally bankrupt accuses a public official of a certain uh, action, which obviously isn't justified. Probably he's only doing it because, you know, because of the different political divide and, and, and all of that. Nothing uh, stops the public official from accusing back, and that's the sad part. If a public official, if you accuse a public official of of of, uh, of being you know, corrupt, of being corrupt, and, 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 and the man says you you are morally bankrupt, then you say, oh, the attack on press freedom. You know, I mean, are you kidding me? Uh, but, but let me make this part about yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday, Boakai. You have a journalist sitting, a talk show host, mm -hmm. who made an allegation of Honorable McGill receiving hundreds of thousands of dollars from the President of the Republic of Liberia to go to the National Election Commission to say thank you to all the commissioners for cheating in the 2017 elections. I'm being blunt, and that's what he said. We have the recording. Wow. Yes. That's a huge, huge allegation. Allegation, which puts the, 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 the National Election Commission into disrepute. It should be a credible institution of integrity. 
Now, according to him, when Mag uh, Honorable McGill got there, he saw Honorable Kokoya, and instead of sharing the money to all of the commissioners, he and Kokoya split the money and ate the money up. Of course, the two individuals are angry, but they're looking at it from a bigger platform that, hey, if we allow this to fly by, then of course the NEC, it's not about us, the NEC will be losing integrity. Yeah. And, 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 so, and not so just let, that, let it's not just that, it's the integrity of the people in public offices. Oh, in public too. offices. But when you say that, and someone comes up to say, look, it's not fair. You are, you are traveling on a dangerous path. Oh no, you know what happened? Our life is at stake in this place. What do you think you put the lives at stake of the other people too? You 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 put the institution in disrepute, and you you, you bring it in a, in a free fall of not having integrity, and and maybe Bwaka will continue. But you that's know, what yeah, I see. Exactly. I just wanted to say that you know the fact that we have a free space for people to freely express themselves, and the president has validated that he put forward uh, the law to decriminalize speech offenses without any prodding from anybody. Uh, he came to power and said, well, you know. Rather than having a law that would prevent people from criticizing authorities, you know, that that was a law that was created in the 1970s and was enforced fully in the 1980s and all of that, the president said, well, I mean, uh, I don't need any safeguard from, from, from the people. If they feel that uh, they need to criticize me for some of the actions that I take, it strengthens me. In fact, you heard the minister of state reference that yesterday when he said, criticisms strengthen the government of Liberia. But that doesn't mean, it's not a license. To make wild, to make wild allegations against the, 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 the government of Liberia without any proof. So public officials also are citizens of the Republic of Liberia, and they have the rights under the laws. So if you accuse a public official of, of malfeasance, of corruption, for instance, of, of um, maybe some of the, the act, for instance, you know, people have been saying initially the, the accusation was that something might have, uh, you know, untoward might have happened towards, might have happened in, in the case of uh, Tyrone Brown. Remember the journalist that died, uh, only to find out later that you know it was a private uh, inc incident involving Tyrone and you know uh, the husband of, of 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 somebody else. And then they did the same thing in the case of Innes, and they, and the the minister of state went out of his way to clarify that the Innes family, you know, are he he's married into the yeah he's married into, into the, the Innes family. family, you know. And then the justice minister came out to clarify that all of these things. Contrary to some of the speculations out there, you know, uh, there were a clear case of um, hit and run, and, and there were witnesses on the scene and all of that. Liberia is just a society of rumor mongering, and, and people will throw accusations here and there, what have you. So it doesn't preclude a public official from feeling injured and taking the case to court. So if a public official counters after attacking him, that is not, um, uh, you know, an attack on press freedom. Contrary to some of the, I've been a journalist myself. One of the things, and, and I've listened to you, and I should say this on the radio, you know, you've been a big brother for, for, for quite a while. Uh, I remember growing up and listening to you on the BBC, you know, like many others. And one of the things I can, I can vouch for is that you haven't, you don't use the airways to attack people's reputation unfairly and say things that are unsubstantiated against individuals and, and all of that. And I should say that when I was when I had my own stint on the radio, I did similar thing. You know, modeling you and the likes of uh, uh, other journalists that were, you know, perfecting the, the, the profession very well. But what we have now isn't a reflection of true journalism. You have people who have their own political, um, you know, persuasions and and and, and instincts, and 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 they're using that to throw accusations. And, 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 and stir up public dissent against the government, which is not a good thing. We have we, this is a post conflict society. You know, uh, we're still fragile. You cannot say that's why the Ministry of Information press release yesterday was specific. I mean, as much in as much as we 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 have created a free environment for all to to operate uh, through the passage of the K. Abdullah Kamara out of press freedom, we caution journalists not to just come on the radio and make propositions. You know that um, are incendiary and will stir up trouble. You know, and and go against the peace that we all enjoy. We've enjoyed a peace for more than 15 years, and the president, since he came to to, to power, has emphasized that we need to ensure that the peace is maintained. He went to the United Nations 
uh, General Assembly and said that in the ensuing months, uh, coming, he's going to, you know, start up with um, a little peace conversations in the in the various counties, and and that is reflective of 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 of, of his nature. Yesterday's press statement by the Ministry of Information, in re in reaction to journalist Chilata's uh, uh, revelation, uh, would you now be asking him, uh, you know, you know, reaching out to him, one way or the other, to to sort of ask him to cooperate with the security agencies? Because for me, it's concerning. It's a grave allegation that if journalists have been targeted, then we should get to the bottom of it. You know, you know, Raji, <clears throat> what you see in my hand here. It's a copy, original copy of the press release yesterday. Yeah. And we are clear and definitive. Right there, we are asking him, the government calls, quote, the government calls on Mr. Jlante to cooperate with the relevant agencies and adduce all information available to assist in the investigation. We're taking it very seriously, and we're going to have the necessary agencies deal with the matter with Mr. Jlante. Uh, it's not about an attack on the media. You've made some serious and grave allegations. You see, let's be honest here. I'll give you reference. The president made a visit to Israel. We're talking about uh, revamping our national security apparatus, agriculture, in the areas of health. They've sent people down already. The president makes another visit to the UAE. The day after he arrived, one group of people from the UAE were already in the country. They follow him on the next flight. Then, on top of that, you see go by chop market, you see an extension, pavement of roads and all that stuff. Pelele doesn't talk about that. The presidential aide makes a mistake out of his photo gallery, and guess what? It becomes big story in the BBC. A simple mistake that the guy came up to correct became an issue. It's a lens. It, it, I mean, obviously, it's, it's from the lens of the of the reporter. You, you and I, as a reporter, have different lenses. I we do see agree. From different angles. So, so reporters, journalists, everybody in the media, the media or the fourth estate serve as a watchdog for society. So, if you are a watchdog, why are you talking about things you don't see, things that you didn't watch happen, and you just build it up in your mind that someone wants to kill you, that the government wants to assassinate this person. So we have the right to call you in. But the real things that matter to the Liberian people, the bread and butter issues, the development going on, is the government keeping its side of the bargain? Is the president keeping the promises he made for free education, better health care? Did he send 18 doctors out of the country? Is he going to build a, a hospital in uh, Bopolu, a 100-bedroom or so hospital? Did that just happen? Did he break grounds for a $3.8 million go-by-chop market? When in fact the same Gobachov market, the same government spent 7.8 million to build a chicken coop. Now this government is going to spend, uh, they spent 7.8 million. This government is going to spend 3.8 million to build a state of the art modern market. Come on now, you spent 17.1 million for fiscal year 2017. This government is projected to spend 1.1 million for fiscal year 2018, 2019. So you're not reporting the things that are factual. You are just there sitting and giving your opinion. But you know, in the reportage of your opinion, you are there castigating Ledger Hureni or Eugene Fangon or Baka Fofana. And the moment they come back to you to say, look, you say I'm corrupt, I say you're morally bankrupt. It's an attack on the media. I fear for my life. When you talk, we don't fear for our lives. When you talk, we don't say you are attacking the, the, the government. We come back and answer you. So when we answer you, it's fair play. So if you live in a glass house, don't throw stone. And if you can't stand blow, don't throw one. I'll give you six. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> and my colleague Eugene Fagon is adept at that. But, you know, I'm not the type usually because of the background to specifically call out a journalist. Mm -hmm. uh, but Eugene made a reference to something. And, you know, uh, you being a journalist, uh, myself, Eugene Fagon, the communicator and one of, the, and, and one of you, the impingement of 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 Justice Janet mm. is reflective of uh, the level of transformation that our democracy have uh, has taken on, you know, uh, because 
you know, people may make all of the different accusations about whether or not they met the rule of law and what have you, but nobody can argue that it went through the constitutional process. You know, uh, that it began firstly with an accusation by a lawmaker, it went through the House of Representatives, and then went, went to the Senate and all of that. You know, usually when you listen to to, to lawmakers, I mean, to, to lawyers, they have different views and all of that. You would think that would be something that would make an international headline for a local journalist. But quite to the contrary, I went on the BBC in the last week. I haven't seen anything. An associate justice. Not a single thing in the country. about the impeachment of associate justice Janet. Nothing. Instead, the preoccupation of a stringer back home is what somebody had to say on their Facebook page. page. You know, one, one would think probably you want to perpetuate the narrative of the opposition. You know, and then following that, a couple of days following that, uh, the person was getting was preoccupied by what my what an opposition person said about what happened at the Central Bank of Liberia, as opposed to what happened to the impeachment. You know, there's nothing about the impeachment of Justice Janet on the BBC website. Absolutely none. But they preoccupied with maybe, uh, you know, I think. Calasco uh, put a picture no, of the Besides Calasco, there's something at the Central Bank of Liberia, I think, about. Two uh, employees. Two employees. Give uh, the president dirty money. Yeah, dirty money <laughs> and, and, and all of those stuff. You know, so. For his travel. Is, is, is there any truth to, uh, to that story? I, I did see in social media. Though. Well, you know, some of the times we've begun so tired of responding to every negative. Uh, stories uh, out there, but there's rumor after rumor. But, but let me and... let me let me speak to that, Baga, just yeah. for one second. And you okay. can continue. You and I know mm -hmm. when you travel out of this country because you're a big traveler. I know you. <laughs> if you carry the twenty dollars note and it's dirty, nobody can hold it. In Liberia, we hold it. In Mali, we hold it. The se several countries will not take the squashed up U.S. dollar oh, yeah. if it's squashed oh, yeah. or it's yeah. dirty. Yeah. So if at all you know that they told you put aside some money for the president travel. You're going to give the president some dirty $20 oil note? I mean, that's just negligence of duty. And as such, you can be suspended. You know, I mean, they will reprimand you. That, Look, you know better. This is the president of the Republic of Liberia. If you know when it comes to currency, how it's handled. But the point we are trying to make, that's your big story compared to the real story that the international community probably will be looking for. But not too employees, third tier or fourth tier employee who didn't do the right thing. That's your hairline story? Come on, we got to be serious around here. We got to be serious. We're talking about 3.8 million state of the art market, modern market for yeah. our people. And every day you want to compare us to Ghana. Well, well, let me let me land on this note, Waka. Mm -hmm. You heard somebody yesterday on the radio saying Ghana, Ghana just reduced tariffs by 50%. And Liberia got yet to move. Didn't we four or five months ago reduced tariffs on over 2,000 basic commodities yep. and just about six days ago we just now cancelled the demorage, demorage. At the port. son you are behind you are behind Ghana is following us you we know, are not following Ghana people deliberately cherry pick about what they want to report and that's not a problem you know as a matter of fact we have the government arms EOB, Lina, and New Liberia and the different government uh, agencies that can report uh, but we ask quote unquote independent media organization to at least do our justice, you know, have our side of the story, as opposed to just running with whatever um, you care. You know, this is the first time we've had this experiment, where we have, in the last 73 years, we've transferred from one leadership to another. Smoothly is the first time that has happened. So we understand there will be oh no, some, some rough edges, some friction, and, and other people who feel that they've been left out and all of that. And, and that is, a lot of that is, you know, uh, beginning to happen. Uh, a few people who, for instance, were at the Ministry of Information and felt that uh, their jobs were taken by uh, people like myself and Minister Eugene Fargon. And, and as a result, they, they, they will unfairly attack you. And, and, and that is what is beginning to happen. We just call on the public to be able to discern uh, that at the end of the day, you know, it's not every accusation that you need to take seriously. Some of these people are just unhappy by the fact that they, they, they are out of jobs. And the government is doing everything. I need to make this claim. You know, we don't look down upon our people just because they are out of jobs. We don't denigrate them. We don't see them as outcasts. Uh, it, is, it behooves the government of the Republic of Liberia to provide opportunities for all to
to exercise um, their skills and competence and, and employability. And, and that is what the, that is opportunity that the government is, is, is seeking right now. When people criticize the president, why is he traveling? What is traveling to bring to bring home these opportunities? When he went to the UAE recently, if, as a matter of fact, we expect a delegation. They're, 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 not tra they're not criticizing the travel of the president. From, from what, I'm no, they did. They what, did. I, what I'm listening to now is more like the composition of the delegation. They're saying well, the delegation well, is huge. Well, and, excuse and, me. And well, I this person. You, this weekend, let, person. let me get to that. Today is Friday, right? I wanted to say today is Friday, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. We expect a 23 different member delegation from, from the, the UAE. UAE. Exactly. This weekend. They can afford it, they say. The argument no, no, no. Is, but, but the argument is... No, 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 but, but it was as a result of the delegation that the two that went. huge. Oh, okay. That went to the UAE. So, you know. the finance minister had his people to deal with, so they're coming. Mm -hmm. Agriculture minister had his people to deal with, they're coming. The city governors had their people to deal with, they're coming. So if you had carried two or three presidents, you would have had just two or three delegates coming back here. And besides, the president also was in Israel before the UAE. Remember, he carried yeah, sure. his health minister. Yeah. Uh, just as he was moving to the UAE, we had the health authorities from Israel, Israel. coming to Liberia and meeting with our own uh, minister of health. You know, and then and now we're going to see the construction of the hospital in. Papolo. Exactly. And, 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 so, and so a number of things begin to happen. We cannot continue to operate with the traditional Britain Wolves organizations and, and you know, the traditional, traditional what? Britain Wolves organizations, <laughs> you know, like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So we need to get out of the box. And that's what the president is doing. He's looking for innovative financing, innovative ways of financing Liberia's development. Uh, we have a challenge. And so the, 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 and so the, 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 the criticism about the, 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 the composition of the delegation doesn't hold. No, it, it does not, and I can tell you why. You know, the, the, the one week the president spent, if I'm going to come yeah. to you, the one week the president spent, he's coming today, by the way, I think he left on Monday, mm -hmm. you know, and people were criticizing that. They didn't even realize that on Monday, following his arrival, his arrival in, in, in Senegal, he had a whole host of different meetings. Including Personally, that with the with, Ethiopian leader. With the Ethiopian leader, with the a Guinea leader, and by the way, they were discussing, you know, Guinea mines right close to our border. Taking it all the way to Conakry before this export there is going to cost them a lot. So the president was suggesting, why not you just go to the the to Nimba, to, come down to, 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 to Nimba, come down to the Bikana port. That is cheaper, and that's going to benefit us. You know, and so, benefit you. And so those are some of the meetings. And then following that, uh, on the second, he had you know obviously the inauguration of 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 of, of the uh, Senegalese president. And then yesterday there was the independence. You know they didn't even research that fight. That first there was an inauguration on Tuesday, and then Thursday was the independence, and then today he's coming. Or oh, they were criticizing the fact that he's. And spent. he was invited to both, so yeah. you see, I killed two birds with one stone. Uh, but the, besides him, there were about 20, 20 African leaders. But there was, also, there was also on the heels of on the sidelines of the, of the. Let me use on the heels of the inauguration. There was also an echo, a mini echo assembly. Yeah, Definitely, exactly. and and w you find yourself in an arena with other world leaders you're talking about taking a delegation of 24 let's break it down mm -hmm. because you see we cannot continue to follow the simple minds all the time we have to help them out of simpleton <laughs> yes tell me anybody in because, their rational because, mind because they express an opinion doesn't necessarily mean their minds no, are simple uh, everybody have an opinion <laughs> But everyone is not entitled to his or her own facts. You know, so things, let's discuss the facts. One of the things I, I spoke about this morning, uh, uh, Minister, Minister, is that as public officials too, we too have a, a moral responsibility to, to tune down the rhetoric. I 100% uh, agree. It's not because we're referred to in, in disparaging ways that from, from, from members of the public. So we should, should, should do the same. Sometimes we must hold the moral high ground. I strongly agree. But when you try to simplify the judgment of a sitting president, then you should do it constructively. And that's why I'm saying, for a president to be away for six days or five days, and you are complaining about a delegation of 24, so then let's put sense to the discourse. Mm -hmm. How many EPS officers do you need for a six-day operation in a foreign country? Yeah, we need a calculator. Let's, let's take that first. Yeah. Would you take six? Seven, eight for the safety of the president. How many presidential eight? Okay, so eight? if you take at least eight mm -hmm. for the president, that's eight from 24. We're left with what? 16? So then you are left with 16. Let's take the governmental side, the official of government, the officials. Mm -hmm. So if you take another at least eight officials because they will be having meetings here and there, 
the 16 finish so now we go to the last eight presidential eight one photographer yeah. one press secretary presidential attendance what are you talking about the number is so insignificant so small and that is why we tell people the past government spent 17.1 million in one year on goods and services this government is spending one is, is projected to spend 1.1 million that is a 16 million dollar difference so when you want to complain and simplify the office of the president let's apply some critical thinking and if you refuse to accept the critical thinking model then of course we're not c condescending to your level but we're just telling you you are a simple mind you know mean and, and simple and, and and there has been no government i mean okay obviously probably there has been but the previous government president we as predecessor was accused of a lot of traveling you know in fact to an extent the people were calling it globe trotting you know uh and it is the very people that were part of the previous government that are making the accusations now you know it was president Selif. the ones who used to get it was president, the exactly it was president Selif a couple of months ago who went at, i mean went to various points in the war it was almost every month that she was making like four or five trips overseas and the journalists criticized her for that and at the time the very people who are making the accusations now were coming in her defense so think about the level of hypocrisy and insincerity you know, and insincerity and that's what has predominated our 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 politics now what well, the president isn't preoccupied by that the president primary preoccupation right now is to ensure that the country is developed you know, um, the last time the Minister of Information was on the radio, he talked about the level of uh, how developmental oriented our president is. He said the first time the president earned his first money from from his, you know, what he was gifted at, soccer, he built a house. And that's exactly what we're beginning to see reflected. Everywhere you go in the Republic of Liberia right now, People we build. see buildings going up, you see roads being developed, you see, I mean, in my own community, I mean, but previously, roads that uh, a couple of years ago didn't even have um, a clear footpath now have bridges and, and, and what, have, uh, what have you. Because this is the modus operandi of the current president uh, that, that we have. And we, should, and we should appreciate that. But what is beginning to, what, what we see happening is the people are beginning to discredit that. People are discrediting that out of uh, their own political uh, leanings. And that is because they have an eye on the ball, the ball being 2023. 20, they don't want this president to get re-elected. And people need to discern that fight. President Weir came to power Perhaps just a year back. ago. Yeah. Just a year ago. I mean, a year ago is like um, uh, uh, 12, 13, 14 months. It's not like he's been in power for eternity. You know, this country, the economy was made worse by the previous regime. You know, or maybe not necessarily deliberately, but circumstances made it worse. In 2014, uh, no, 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 I, I, I disagree. Crisis. It was no, deliberate. No, I mean, I just want to talk they about. They printed excess amount of money. No, don't forget. In, in addition to that, <laughs> but I was just want to point out the Ebola crisis. You know, uh, the Ebola crisis. In addition there to were the, certainly, deliberately, there were certainly exogenous factors. There were some of the exogenous yeah, factors. Yeah, 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 okay, the yeah. Ebola crisis, for instance, you know, uh, it, it brought our our economic growth that was nearing. Following uh, the election of President Selly, that was nearly two, uh, double DJ growth, it came down to almost zero. You know, and, and, and as such, uh, the government tried at the time to uh, re energize and, and, and renew the different economic factors to bring it up. It was uh, about 2.5% growth when President Weah took over. And that has, been, that has persisted. So for people to blame President Weah for the level of, 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 of um, economic. You know, uh, uh, um. Down, downturn. The downturn we see in our economy is so unfair. It's so unfair because what what this government has been doing is to firstly increase the level of social spending by the different rules and and, and what have you. Uh, increase the level of employment by the different intervention in the private sector. We have uh, three million dollars that, that the government uh, budgeted uh, that's currently at uh, the Liberian Bank for Development and Investment for for private sector investment that has been added on to by the War Bank. We've had other interventions with the limited resources that we have. Remi be reminded that President Weah doesn't have the
the level of goodwill that his predecessor had. You know, uh, the actual revenue generation hovers around $480 million. All of the other thing that brings the budget to about $570 million is just about goodwill. We don't have that level of goodwill now. And not, not because he's in power. It's because uh, the people feel, well, we are an independent and sovereign nation. We no longer depend on on mill. We no longer depend on the, um, you know, the overseas development assistance that we previously had. And they, they let us be. And so we need to have a realistic, and that's what you're going to see the government going to do uh, in, in, in subsequent budget uh, planning. We're going to have a realistic budget that is reflective. That's what the IMF proposed. That is reflective of our actual revenue income, uh, income our actual revenue generation, generation. as opposed to, uh, you know, uh, maybe projections that there might be some overseas development assistance and all of that. Because we're not we, we're not beginning to have that, and so we're going to make actual projections for different ministries and and and, and agencies. And what that's going to mean is that previously, where you have ministries and agencies having, um, you know, excess in terms of goods and services. They're not going to have that anymore. And we're beginning to, to, to experience that. Under the President, we are administration. We do not have the $120 million or $130 million that, that were budgeted under President Selly for goods and services. Uh, and goods and services, by the way, mean that you're going to have money to buy cars and gas slip and, and, and scratch cars and other uh, uh, you know, non-essential items. And then that would have crowded out money that would be used for development under President Weir. He said we're going to reduce that by a significant percentage point. Right now, we do not have an Ministry of Information, for instance. Uh, the last time we received gas slip was well, like seven or eight months ago. You know, uh, we do not receive, uh, I'm sure you're probably beginning to, to, to notice that. So the government is not wasting money on things like gas slip and scratch car and cars. I'm using my own vehicle, for instance. If I go, it's struggling as well. And, 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 and that is because the president has his eye on the ball. He wants to ensure that we have things like roads and bridges and and and, and money for healthcare, sector, agriculture, and the energy booming. sector. That's where money's been di uh, sector redirected. Yeah, you know, and and other President Sully, by the way, one of the reasons we begin to get the devil of criticism, there were a lot of money for, you know, quieting the storm, uh, quieting the storm, man. Uh, you know, talking to my colleagues, uh, journalists. And, and, and what have you, uh, making sure that they are subsided and they're not going to uh, raise uh, the level of criticism that they're beginning to raise now with us, those money is not available anymore. No way. The, the, the money has been redirected no way. to So to that's roles. why you think that they, they, been, they don't what they're doing? No, we won't, we won't blanket it exactly. because it's just a handful of people. They, they don't even pass a little strain of a hair. And, and those are the ones who don't understand where we're coming from. When the president took over, the president made it emphatically clear that, look, I'm inheriting a bad economy and a broke government. One of the reasons why people are angry is that, hey, it's like every day we all around here, we know we're having a party. But all of a sudden, Ledger Who says he's broke. Every time we see Ledger Who, he's broke. But every time we see Ledger Who, he got a cold brew in front of him. How is it that you're broke, but there is tuition-free university? When we had money... There was no tuition free university. How is it that you broke, you digitized the university, and you pay YAC fees? And you're paving all the roads. We had the roads funds. We never paved the roads. You inherited a broke economy, uh, a bad economy, and a broke government. But you're constructing all the roads, brother. You send the doctors out of the country. You're building a 14th military hospital. You're building bridges. My friend, you're paying your employees on time. But you're looking at us every day, you say you broke. Yeah. Well, what they don't understand is that the lavish, the lavish spending is no longer there. Yeah. He caught waste, fraud, and abuse. He slashed his own paycheck by 25%, yeah. then went across the board to slash our paycheck by 10%, saving the country almost $60 million a year. You had the road funds, what well, you deal with it, it's your business. He got just small part of it. The roads are on course. So if we're able to cut waste, fraud, and abuse, stop the unnecessary spending by cutting goods and services, making sure that those things that work for our people are on course, you will always feel I got money. But the reason why I got money is because I don't have 24 girlfriends. <laughs> I don't park six cars in my yard. 
my friend I don't want to live in a 20 story building all president we are wants to do is to make sure his citizens are okay and the part that hurts them the most is that when the monies were flying around they were all beneficiaries but today we ourselves in government cannot even see gaslit and so if we cannot see gaslit at times how about you that have now gone to the substitute bench what they need to understand is that this president means business and what this president means is what he is doing education is a priority agriculture is a priority the healthcare sector is a priority and most importantly good governance and that is why no journalist is in jail if you look at the president follow him religiously you will see that when you punch his government his government will not punch you back if you throw stones at us we will not do the same but if you accuse us we're not going to dock our heads in the sand we defend our reputation and our integrity <laughs> and that's what some a very small percentage of people in the media that are you know propagating these falsehood lies and st things don't understand for example how many people know that there was a meeting held with Firestone yesterday how many people know that tentatively uh, it is now settled to the point where the rubber wood company that would have done away with the first 200 will not be sold to a third party hopefully and even if the government can find one they can bring it in and the people that were working there will be prioritized how many people know that the contracts the discontinuation of those contracts if at all the third part of the plantation is you know uh, given to some contractors to do that those people will be given priority to be hired they don't know all these bits and pieces we have to tell them but then when you tell our colleagues they wake up soon in the morning they say my man you go tell our good news nobody will listen and that's and all the news that the people want to hear as a matter of fact this government is corrupt where's the evidence uh, we don't have to show evidence you already know these are the things we put up with so roads are on course doctors will come back to this country after five years students who we send overseas that pass the wire examination with distinctions will all be coming back with master's degrees and some of them will be afforded the opportunity to travel to travel again especially the ones that will do very well the university they the said, said. And let me pick a boom with aja when this president made the pronouncement you about mean the, the association of liberian journalists in america in america yes. they america. said that it was a political gimmick i'm quoting them a political gimmick the day you have the chance, can you call our friends at Aja and tell them it's over? Is it still a gimmick? You don't, you know, people are not used to having certain things done. And so it's confusing to them that a president who inherited a bad economy and a broke government, like the analogy I made, you know, let's just say he's broke all the time, but the world's fourth or fifth poorest nation have a tuition free university for all public universities and colleges. How did that happen, my friend? I thought you said you were broke. No, the truth of the matter is, our president is cutting waste, fraud, and abuse. Secondly, secondly, the huge sums of money that was being paid to us for rendering service to our country and our people is slashed. Goods and services, I just made reference to fiscal year 2017, 2018. They spent 17.1 million. First year, fiscal year. This president is projected to spend 1.1 million. What happened to the 16 million? 2,000, almost 2,000 goes named on the Ministry of Information, uh, Education payroll. Yeah. We're supposed to be paying ghosts in this country. But let me say to anybody, President George Weah is the first president to sack or fire Spirit. I don't know how he saw them, but he fired them. And what did he do? Employed qualified teachers. How is it that we have an educational system according to the former president that is a mess and then you have almost 2,000 spirit teaching who are they teaching ghost names and, and and the thing about it i mean you one of the things that the president which is reflective of good governance is beginning to to demonstrate is have you heard about the uh, national biometrics yeah sure um, you know the, the, the cars and stuff uh, Chia Nangwe is doing a wonderful job what he does that. is that he has biometrics of all civil servants. So we do not have uh, the possibility now that we had before of ghost names and all of that. Yeah. And that saves the government a lot. So, so they do not just um, uh, you know, register 
the general citizenry, they also register civil servants. So the different government ministries and agencies beginning to benefit from the fact that we're not going to have people who have Joseph We are, for instance, with the same biometrics, and then uh, Peter Paul with, with, with the same name uh, and the same biometrics. Once you have the same biometrics, uh, they're going to be synchronized as just one person. And, and so that possibility doesn't exist uh, anymore. And so we've reduced the level of ghost name. And this is due to the ingenu uh, ingenuity of, uh, of our president. He said we need to make sure that we, we make sure we, 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 we have biometrics, you know, of the level of civil servants that we have in the country. Are people like the, I mean, at the health ministry have been able to save a lot. People at the Ministry of Education have been able to save a lot. What you, what you see normally when people criticize the president, you know, there's something called the establishment. And establishment normally, um, those group of people who believe that power and success belongs belong to them. <laughs> you know, uh, it, is that, it, is their, it is their domain. Uh, and they should be the one that will be the president. It should be the one that will be uh, the minister of, of state, for instance, or the minister of education. They don't think that somebody from a uh, predominantly slum neighborhood, because that's what you're beginning to see yeah. uh, in the different government ministries and agencies, people with underprivileged backgrounds, you know, are the ones that have been appointed to different government ministries and agencies. And that's what's beginning to peeve a lot of people. You know, that's, that's what something they've been used to since 1847. You know, uh, what they've been used to since 1847. Even I mean, though the I mean, people are adequately qualified. Even though they're adequately are. qualified. And, and so when they talk about qualification, they don't talk about the academic credentials. What they talk about is the fact that they don't, be, they don't belong to the elite, elite. Oh, the you know, establishment. the establishment. And, and, and that's why you hear they, they refer to people as these people, where did they come from? Haven't you seen that a lot on social media? No, no, I, oh, they, they I, say, I read a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah, they say, uh, where, did these, where, where did these people come from? Uh, where are they? And, and these are a bunch of incompetent people. And, and, and that's where they get it wrong, because you disparage a whole bunch of people. And where do they find solace? In a person who identifies with them. If you notice, the, the development uh, drive of our president has been directed at underprivileged neighborhoods. I mean, look at the different neighborhoods. Um, uh, uh, Jamaica Road, uh, 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 Doe Community, you know, uh, Clara Town, West Point. Those Nicole are the different, different and, and that's where they don't get it. I mean, I, I listened to um, uh, a politician the other day who was um, uh, part of the old order, and he, he apparently had some reflections and said, there is no politician who seemed to be very cunning and smart as President George Weir. He's directing development where it matters the most. Where it matters the most. I mean, you have a lot of people on social media criticizing, oh, the man wear the Kubert suit, he did this. Look at the level of uh, internet penetration. Less than 10%. Yeah, yeah. We have about 62% of the population that voted for President George Weir. They're not on Facebook. I mean, you got to do a lot to criticize President Weir. I mean, all of the criticism, look at the time he went to Jamaica Row. Look at the time he went to, to Paintsville. I was I mean, shocked. They, I was shocked when I, I saw people laying down their lapas. I was shocked when he went to, to dedicate the Chuba Road. The yeah. Chuba Road. I got I, lost I, in the crowd. I saw him on. Exactly. I, 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 so I, I, it's not resonating I, with ordinary people. Remember when the president gave them a free pass and said, well, I mean, you asked for demonstration against the quote unquote 16 billion I was missing. Go demonstrate. How many people did they pull? Less than 100. Less than a hundred. He said, "Okay, let me give you a presidential investigative committee." Yeah. And then they said, "No, it would not be credible. Yeah. This accusation is against your government." He said, "Okay, I accept. What do you want?" They said, "Bring in foreign intervention." He said, "Okay, you got it. Look, he brings in the foreign intervention. What does our friends do?" Uh, I don't think they're credible. My friends, what do you want? Okay, you know what? We see that report. We see the presidential investigative team report. But you have to understand, Mr. President. The Kroll report said they needed further clarity. Yeah. The PRT says they need uh, they did not have the scope, the time, or the resources. So, Mr. President, just as they recommended, we need an audit. We have a statutory organization or institution here called the GAC. The president said, okay, the way they're bugging me, let me give them, hey, you got two weeks. The librarian poor want to know something about the stuff. Yeah. The same people complain. Two weeks is not enough. He's given six weeks. Why are you giving them six weeks? What do you want? And, and what it was, do you and, really and want? And it would seem like 
they don't want actual investigation because they keep moving the goalposts. At one point, and, and Baca, they want pardon me, an independent investigation. Pardon, pardon me, yeah. please. Okay. They cry for the 16 billion. Yeah. Most of them accuse the president directly of stealing the money. In case some of them said he had the money in containers in his backyard. Okay, when the report came and identified that true, no 16 billion got missing, the president said, I'm thankful I was vindicated. Because on the 16 billion, they said I took it. But the excess amount of money that was printed, that was discovered. You see anybody in the street demonstrating against it? Bring back our money? Or I thought I would have seen a new group to say, account for the two point what? Seven billion? Yeah. Right. At, because 2. the first one, billion. Two point six. The first one was bring back our money. Well it's not it shouldn't be bring back. It is established that two point six billion was printed in excess. You know and, and I expected them to go on the street and say, account for our money. But because they know that indeed it was not him, it was not his government, it was their buddies, they say, Okay, you know what? Forget about the two point six billion. Tell us about the 17 million that was infused into the economy to mop up excess liquidity. Shoot up the matter. The foreign investigative team, the presidential investigative team, said that the value for the 17 million could be seen, it was reported, it was accounted for. However, the manner and way in which it was conducted needed further clarity. My friend, we show you your own money. But your own, you couldn't show it. You, we can't find it. But you're not going back there to say, account for that money. But the one way you can see where you are, you can count it. It had value for money. You say you want clarity on that one. We have to make progress here. And this president is doing just that. And, and the thing is, when you look on Facebook or, or you know, the different social media platforms uh, regularly, you know that it is a deliberate attempt to just discredit the president. Something as trivial as the suit is wearing, you know, say, oh, I mean, Kalasco is taking too many pictures, you know, or, or the president is visiting. The president went to the president went to the UAE, and because that's where he ended his footballing career. Yeah, exactly. And, and in well, appreciation and in appreciation of, of of the club he played for, Al Jazeera you know, went to do a kick out, kick it, kick out with them. And the next day, a lawmaker was at the the, 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 the legislature holding <laughs> a <laughs> journey. And, and, and you know, one of the things I should say, you know, we mocking, shouldn't mocking, we shouldn't mocking, run mocking from the, the president's president. past. We shouldn't run from the president's past. The president was a world class footballer. He's the only. He's not just a president, he's a celebrity a, around the world. He's a celebrity Whether around the world. Not. He's hey, the only hey, African the player. The president was. The yeah. president is. Yeah, he's the only African player who's become the best at his game. The only African who's become the best at his sport. That he play, you know. Some of the times when I see, you know, people that are in our ranks will say, "Oh, we, we, we." The president didn't just go for soccer, and he went for this and that. We shouldn't run for the president past. The president went out, and people saw that he was the world best player. In addition to his, his, his the fact that he's seeking investment opportunities, he's creating uh, bilateral uh, ties with different international organizations. When people see a fit that they, you know, identify with the fact that he was a former player. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You know, we shouldn't so, run from it. If you became president, would you not go forward. back and visit your friends? Exactly. Before you exactly. Go, but before you even go forward, uh, you know, I was last in, in, in Kenya uh, in, in November, and there was a pool of BBC, former BBC people and BBC people mm -hmm. to open the, 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 the biggest bureau of the BBC in, out, outside of the UK. And some of my former colleagues who and I worked at the time with the BBC, you know, East Africans and uh, the Fijigandians and Tanzanians, they seem to me, legend hood. We wish we had a president like your president. Exactly. You know, uh, I say why? I say because he's a celebrity. Yeah. People love him. You know, he's everywhere. Like everywhere. And, and, you, know, you you travel, and as soon as you give him a Liberian passport, the first thing, oh, how is President George Weah doing? I hope you all have not given that man hard, hard time. time. Because so, the people know. But, 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 Legi, but if you were to you know, return to Bible London... The always says so. The prophet is not respected in his own, own home. <laughs> but if you were to return to London, would you not go back to your old neighborhood oh, and go greet people? Yeah. This man played for Al Jazeera. And then he goes to the UAE and Al Jazeera is right back there. And you say he shouldn't go speak to his old buddies and to kick around with them? Look, we got to get serious here. And, and this the thing man about was world it is, best. Yeah. 
Africa's best, European best, Ballon d'Or, three-time Africa best, we should say anyways, but more so, he's about to become president's best <laughs> in this country. President's best because here is why I say so. For me, I like to back my statement with facts. Look, we paved 750 50 kilometers of road from 1847 to 2017. Now, that's not 800 kilometers, though. That's 750. In his first year, he's paving over 400 kilometers of roads, which is over half of what we printed since Judy Ashman married the city gray. Now, in the, in the world's fourth or fifth poorest nation, they like to joke us, we now have a tuition-free university. Since 1847, they never even thought about digitalizing that place. Now, forever, we've been paying West African Examination Council fees students out. Liberia have never produced in mass, I said in mass, specialists, ENT, or, 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 or orthopedic, anesthesiologists. He bundled 80 and sent it out of the country. In the next five years, we have our own specialists here. We've never seen a clinic for the soldiers that have been up to date. They ha now will have state-of-the-art 14th military hospitals. We've never seen a real serious modern market. All we know that Jopenta market, Miracle market, we are about to experience the power the of innovative shop. thinking with the go by chop market. We've never seen falling, falling rows. We are about to see them. At the end of the day, you are telling me now there wouldn't be a title called President's Best. It's going to happen in this country. And sooner or later, when the law is passed for President's Day, he will be one of the presidents standing amongst the rest of the other presidents that we will be focused on. It's not that we don't respect the others, but we'll be focused on the icon that brought about change. You're listening and, and, to the Super Morning Show right here on ELBC Radio 99.9 FM and other frequencies across Liberia. Let me remind our listeners that we're waiting words from the Roberts International Airport in Bagibi County, where the Manuel Kepa and crew are standing by for the arrival ceremonies of His Excellency President George Manawea, who's been on a week-long visit to the West African state of Senegal. Okay. Yeah, we, we're waiting for the president. I mean, uh, we, we're all <laughs> going to be at the airport shortly. But what I was just going to point out that, in, in addition to some of the things that Fakon was just saying about the different roles and what have you, I mean, come to think of it, uh, maybe, by the way, let me just name some of the roles that are being paid. Uh, you know, we've had a challenge with the role from Ganta to Tapeta and then on to Onwater's Wedgwood, right? Uh, that role is going to be funded uh, by international partners. But currently, before the deal is even struck, a couple of months down the line, what the president has decided is that the role got to be pliable yeah. before uh, the actual deal is struck. That role is extremely bad. And one of the things that we have down there that the president is considering very sternly is the Jackson F. Doe Hospital. hospital yeah. That's a major hospital. Yeah. One of the largest referral hospitals in the country, which is absolutely not accessible. Yeah, actually, it's yeah. because of the, the, the bad and, road. And, and because of the bad road, you know, people got to go there by helicopter. Uh, you know, I know this personally because I need I needed to take my mom there, and she had to fly a helicopter. I don't even have the fees to fly my mom there with a helicopter. Yeah. And so people, so if you go to Gantan, if you go to Gantan now, you'll be able to just drive there. And that's even before the road is fully paved, you know. Uh, so so right now the president is ensuring that all roads leading to the southeastern part of the country and other parts of the country, I mean, Bonjama, uh, you know, the north, um, the east part of the country, all of them will not become inaccessible like it used to be uh, during the rainy season. So that's for Ganta to Tapeta to Zuejo. Then there is the road from Ganta to uh, Yekepa. The president pre prevailed on Asilometa and he told them that you got to fix the road. I mean, operating in Yekepa, for, God, for, for God's sake, you need to make sure that this road is paved. You got all the cross rocks here. You got all of the cross rocks and all it's the right here. So Do you it. need to make sure that this road is paved. And Asilometa is working on that road as we speak. You know, uh, so so that's where it's going to be paved. Then we're talking about also the Ganta to Logato and then to the Avoran border. Leave from and, and, and go to Lofa now. Yeah, so so exactly. So uh, yeah, my hometown. <laughs> yeah, go to Lofa. So so ro what's going to begin on uh, the Ganta to I mean the, sorry the Banga to Salaye yeah. and then from Salaye onward to Vonjama. Uh, yeah. it, is the, it is the Banga to Salary Road that the that the presidential the, aide Kalasko made a mistake with. Yeah, that yeah. brought in all of the. the, the, and the no, he, but but, but the thing about it is, this. I mean, he, he did say that it was an obviously it was an honest error. I mean, that was somebody an honest, error. honest yeah, error. So the, the work had the work has begun, and somebody posted 
a picture and picture to Carlasco and said, well, this is the work that has begun. He knows, we all know that the work has begun. Father Fagor and myself and all of us know that the work has begun. Except that we couldn't validate whether that was a picture of the work that has begun. Right. And so somebody pictured to Carlasco and Carlasco posted it and only to realize that actually that was not the actual work. But that is not to deny the fact that actual work from Ganta to Salaye and then on Now I was to speaking with our correspondent Chuck Batano this morning and he says, you know, the work has been done up until the, 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 the bridge. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So the widening uh -huh. of the road and, and further down the road, the building covers and building uh, the covers where, where they need to build covers. And, and mind you, the people said Lofa did not vote for this president. Yeah. He won 14 counties, so he wouldn't do anything. You think Malba Mo uh, uh, yeah. Malu will sit there and nothing goes to a county? Yeah. Or you think uh, uh, Mogamo and all these or people will sit, will sit there? Or Baga <laughs> Fofana will sit there? But look at what he's doing for Lofa. Mm -hmm. So again, come 2023, but it's, it's, not it's over so, so, so it's not when, just when, Lofa. When, it is when, also when when, the, when someone takes over as the president of the republic, he's the president of the republic. The whole Liberia. country is not whether or not a particular segment of Liberians vote for them or not vote for him. So, so, so it's all of Liberia. I mean, we're talking about the Banga Broad Street role. I mean, you will see that uh, a lot of work. Bikano the Fairground. The Bikano Fairground. Kakata. Role. We're talking Kakata. By the way, uh, there are a lot of I mean several kilometers yeah. of road work has begun in Kakata. And in a couple of months down the line, you will begin to see the fruit of this work. The Johnsonville Road, the Minister of State referenced that yesterday, that work has fully begun. I mean, we're talking about the different community roads. But in my own community, in the Baptist Seminary, uh, there is a road uh, yeah, that, that is beginning now, right at the Baptist Seminary Road. I mean, Baptist Seminary uh, uh, Road there, you will see uh, the road is being paved with, this time not uh, asphalt, but uh, it's been cemented. And, and, and what just as the Tinker's Village rule. And sooner so, or later, the president will look into bombing with eyes linking. Uh -huh. Because everyone is poking fun at us <laughs> that we got one total gas station, <laughs> one road leading straight into the counter to the gas station, who and that's where it stops. Who told us to win the county me? Who told us to win the county? <laughs> but that's why the president is going to give. Ledger, don't bring politics here. All the governments. There is one road leading into our county, and as it enters, it stops right to the total gas yeah, station. Yeah, yeah. There is no left. No right. We have absolutely no but, pay you know, To tell you the truth about Trottenberg, and which is not the discussion here today, I really don't know the city. Because for me, the city is yesterday. To, to, to town. You know that well, that's one place myself. Having okay, been, wait for been, President. We are his coming. <laughs> <laughs> wait for President. We are his coming. Just wait. Yeah. We, you see, Bumi people, we're very patient-minded. No, I love Bumi. I yeah, love we're very patient-minded. But, but, but you know, just but before the we The President close, is coming, we know. Yeah. And that is why when our own lawmaker, every morning, going to be shouting around the place, we tell him straight out. And this is no Sano offense. Johnson? Honorable Sano Johnson, we've told him straight out. Charles Taylor pronounced to the Liberian people that he was from Bomi. We saw nothing. Madam Ellen Johnson Salif from Jejua, 12 years straight. Our county is the least poorest county in the whole country. You were senators under both presidents. Both presidents came from Bomi. Snow, the speaker from Bomi. Alex Taylor, the, the, the speaker from Bomi. This president have come put his arms around Snow, put his arms around Tyler, and you are just there screaming. And you know fully well the road stops at the total. Stop because we want to see development like the people of River G. Yeah. River G, can you imagine see the Kota Road are in our place right now? Sastan, see the modern buildings that are being constructed, over 200 homes or so. Look at Lofa, Konya, Vonjama, Go to Nima, go on. I will play still there. And as the president trying to figure out in his mind what to do with the bombing situation, you are there confusing him every day. We say stop as citizens of that county. Stop I just, because we want our own road too. I just wanted to point Three out point. that as we close this interview, I mean, I, I'm watching the town, you know, that this government is committed to reconciliation. Uh, the president, which is a big part of which our, is a big part of our march to, you know, to national development. You know, the, the uh, in all that we can see, in all that we do, uh, we have to ensure that there's one common melting pot, and that melting pot in common place is Liberia. Yeah, uh, we, one big banana tree. We can show the accusations here yeah. and there. You know, the previous president mentioned that one of the places that she didn't do as much. Uh, in fact, two of the places was uh, with uh, reconciliation and corruption. And this president is beginning to take off from where she stopped, you know. 
uh, firstly, we are tackling corruption, but also uh, there's been a lot of talk about reconciliation and uh, doing his appearance at the uh, UN General Assembly. The president said that he's going to initiate palaver hot discussion. That was one of the recommendations in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission report. And I hear a lot of people talking about, oh, war crimes and this and that. I mean, it's not just as simple as, as that. The war crime recommendation, uh, firstly, it was a quasi-judicial process. Uh, it, 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 it recommended a number of things, which many people ha you know, have said it requires, some of those things require a full judicious inquiry. You know, uh, for instance, you cannot, our constitution forbids um, uh, penalizing somebody, for instance, banning a person from politics without the person having a due process. And that uh, isn't, uh, you know, the, the I think that has I mean, gone to the Supreme Court and the court. Be, besides, uh, those recommendations need to be validated by the people of Liberia through their representatives in the House of Representatives and through the legislature. And that process has to begin. And, and, and so when people say, oh, the president has committed to that, the president not committed to that, all of that. What, what about beginning first with the national legislature? The, the national legislature has to validate uh, the different recommendations of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Uh, then, of course, when there are challenges from individual citizens who've been uh, you know, penalized or disbarred or, or what have you, whatever the terminology is, if, if there are challenges from those people, it has to go to our Supreme Court of Liberia. So it's not just an issue that a president can take on with the stroke of, of a pen. But one of the things I can say is that in his different pronouncements, the president has said that he's committed to reconciliation. He's committed to ensure, uh, as a matter of fact, just after following the election when he went to the National Elections Commission to receive his certificate, he did urge people to come out and fully express themselves. You know, you can criticize the government as you want uh, in the different offices and, 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 and places. You can do as much as you like. Nobody's going to go after you. Um, uh, the Minister of State did reference yesterday that criticisms strengthen the government. And that's what that's the approach we've taken. I mean, Fagon is criticized every day. If any person is criticized, it's Minister no, Eugene, it it's Minister Eugene Fagon. He, you don't see him running after the journalist or criticizing or, or maybe attacking that person. All of us, you know, experience that on a regular basis. And that that is reflective of what the president's thought is. So for people to say just because they're criticized, that our life is threatened is just unfair. But by the way, we want to make we want to uh, emphasize that uh, popular radio talk show host uh, T. Max Schlatter's accusations against um, individuals or named. He didn't name. He didn't say the government. So, but the fact that he said journalists, uh, there was a list of journalists to be you know uh, targeted, targeted, and what have you. We thought it that we thought it was grave enough to warrant our investigation, even though we were formally asked. So the government of Liberia is beginning an investigation into those accusations, while at the same time calling on journalists to make sure they don't just raise, uh, they don't just make propositions because they have the microphone. Because you are sitting behind EOBC microphone, you don't just uh, make, doesn't give you the right to say just, any and just, anything. Yeah, you can't just say anything. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, those are incendiary comments that could, um, you know, uh, spark up conflict. This is a post-conflict society. The population is still traumatized, so we need to. Uh, uh, you know, uh, remember that fact. You, you came from the diplomatic side, and I appreciate that. <laughs> but let me just say this, Leggy. In closing. <clears throat> In closing. Leggy, let's be honest. No newspaper closed down or burned down. No journalists flogged or dragged to jail. The reality here on the ground is that I think our friends need to understand that if you live in a glass house, don't throw stones. Because if you do, stones will come back. If you can't throw, if you can't take blow, don't throw blow. But you cannot get up in the morning and just hit everything at the government. And then when the government respond, and then you take it out of context. Look, T. Max Jarter is a brother and a friend. But I don't think three girls will call T. Max Jarter if he comes outside the studio. Let alone say we won't knock our heels on your head. There is no, absolutely no way in the world any member of President Weir's cabinet or government, so to speak, will go after any journalist. The Ministry of Information is equipped to deal with misinformation, mistruths, and falsity. We are there to make sense of what 
is nonsensical.